Sorry. And um, you could begin with Matt to give your two and a half minute statement. I'm Matt Hills. I'm running for the Ward 7 School Committee seat. Uh, Sue and I are running against each other. It's an open seat. Mark Laredo, the chair of the school committee, uh, currently holds the seat. And Mark is in his fourth term. He hits term limits, so it's an open seat. I'm running for the school committee because I think I could make a significant difference on the school committee given the issues that we face, not just in the short term, but over the medium and long term. Uh, I'm <coughs> someone who's been uh, very involved in the community for many years and very involved in the schools for many years. I also have a significant professional <coughs> career in finance and business that I bring to the table. So I think the combination of that passion and commitment to the community as well as the professional experience that I have would make for a pretty needed addition to the school committee. Lisa and I, uh, my wife Lisa and I, have lived here for 17 years. We moved here in 1992. We have four children, all of whom are in or have been in the public schools, Ward, Bigelow, and North. One's in college now, and uh, one's at Bigelow, and two are at North. So we're in our 15th year as Newton Public School parents with quite a number of more years to go. Been involved in the community in a number of different ways, on the PTO for eight years as treasurer of Ward School, on the elementary equity committee. I was vice chair of a Blue Ribbon Commission to look at elected officials' salaries. I, uh, at Temple Emanuel, chaired the search committee for our senior rabbi, was vice chair of the committee for our school director, and have generally been involved over the course of the last 10 or 15 years. Professionally, I'm a partner with a private equity and venture capital firm, uh, a lot of finance and business experience. Part of my responsibility is not only investing in companies to help them grow, but hiring and overseeing the senior management team, in particular the CEOs, COOs, and CFOs of the companies. I have a lot of corporate and nonprofit board experience. I was president of the board of a nonprofit organization located here in Newton. Uh, public and private corporations, US, Canada, and Israel. A lot of audit and compensation committee experience. The key to what I do for a living is work with organizations that have significant financial challenges so that those organizations can continue to grow and thrive, notwithstanding the financial challenges. And what I want to do is bring that experience that I have professionally to the part of my life that's very personal, which is the public school system. Thank you. Hello, my name is Sue Flykopf, and I'm also running for Ward 7 School Committee. I, there are four areas that I would like to focus on as a school committee member, and the first is uh, obviously f hiring a new superintendent. The um, school committee that we elect will be the ones who are responsible for hiring the superintendent in the spring, hopefully. Uh, for me, because, because the whole purpose of the public schools is to educate our children, for me what's most important is that we hire someone who's an educational leader, who understands how to make the classroom um, an exceptional place for our, for our children. Uh, we're also obviously looking for someone who can manage a very large budget and a large school system, as well as someone who can communicate with the public and help reestablish trust in our community, um, in, in the schools and how they're run. The next area is long-range financial planning, which is something that's starting to be done in the Newton Public Schools. Uh, but there will be a lot of guidance needed from the school committee in terms of how it will be used as a tool to budget and to plan for the future, how it ties in with the strategic plan and where we want our schools to go, and how um, we can present it to the public and it can be used by the public. The next area is high quality teaching because the teacher is the most important thing in the classroom relating to our children's education. And so we need to do our utmost to make sure we hire, train, retain, and evaluate our teachers um, and help you know, build a, a high quality classroom for, for our children. And then the last area is communications, which is something I've worked on in my volunteer time here in Newton. Um, I believe that we need to continue to improve communications between the school committee, the school administration, and the public, um, and, and really work to reestablish the trust that's frayed over the last few years. Um, a little bit about me, I have three children in the Newton Public Schools. I have a third and a fifth grader at Bowen and an eighth grader at Oak Hill. I, um, I, I'm a product of the public schools myself, not here in Newton. I grew up in Peabody. I went to UMass Amherst. I have an MBA from Northeastern University, and I was a PhD candidate at the University of Maryland 
um, studying international business. I've been involved, I was the Bowen PTO co-chair for three years and the PTO council, the umbrella organization for the PTO is here in Newton. I was the co-chair of that for three years. I've served on a variety of boards and committees here in Newton. I've been on the board of the Newton Schools Foundation, of the League of Women Voters. I'm currently on the board of the Newton Hist Historical Society and also on the advisory council for the Newton Community Service Center. I uh, was on, oops, oh, sorry, my time is up. <laughs> <laughs> First question. So, do you believe that Newton pays enough attention to students in the middle? Some parents say that strong and weak students get lots of attention, but middle students do not. Is this true? And if so, what would you do about it? I actually feel that the, we don't pay enough attention in the middle schools, and this has been an issue for me. No, no, middle students in the middle. Oh, students in the middle. Oh, in the middle. Okay. Um, actually, you know, I've heard a lot of concern of parents as we go around um, and, and meet with people that there is a lot of concern for students in the middle. There are some, um, there's a new program being uh, started at elementary schools at Countryside and Pierce that I think will, if it's successful, will really help um, help those students who you know people feel are falling through the cracks. Um, what they're doing is they uh, assess the children. This came up from the teachers, by the way, as a way to improve teaching with the limited resources in the schools. And so they would assess the children. Let's take the math program, for example, and they divide them into three different groups. And all the children have math at the same time, but they're you know the children who need the ch extra challenge work will be working in one group. The children who are really struggling and need some extra attention will be in another group, and those in the middle will get their, atten will get their own uh, attention together. And um, what's nice about this is that the program they're working on is very flexible. So the children will be assessed, and as they, as they improve or as they find that they're really stuck, you know, grasping a, 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 an issue, then they can be moved around. So they're not stuck. It's not always the smart kids together and the kids who are struggling together. Um, but as they, as you move through the curriculum, there'll be flexibility. Um, so I, I do feel that there are ways that we can work to address um, the children who are in the middle. Um, and here we go. I'll leave it at that. <laughs> okay, Matt, please. I, I, I think that I, I've heard an earful over the year and a half or so of this campaign that <coughs> students in the middle are falling between the cracks and then parents who feel that their kids are you know, at, at the top of the class aren't getting the right attention and then kids who feel, the parents who feel that their kids need the attention because they're struggling are not getting enough attention. So I don't have any sense as to whether this is more of a problem for kids in the middle than at the high end or the low end. What I would say is this is part of a larger issue, which is making sure that every child or virtually every child is being looked after and their issues being addressed, whether those issues are they need more help, whether their issues are they need less help but a lot more challenge, or whether they're in the middle. And this is fundamentally, as it is in any organization, a management issue. You have to have a superintendent who understands the complexity and has the sophistication to manage what's a very large system. This isn't simply a matter of someone who knows how to manage a budget, somebody who knows how to hire and fire. This is somebody who knows how to drive a culture, a way of operating, a way of thinking every day through the organization so that you've got systems and processes in place, many of which are qualitative, not quantitative, so that you're able to see what's going on in the core area of that organization. And in a school system, that core area is how the students, how the children are doing. Who's struggling, who needs help. This isn't something eight people on the school committee can do. This is something the school committee can address by making sure the right leader, the right superintendent, with the right management mindset is hired and takes hold of the organization. <laughs>